in a new hangout. Hello, we are in a new live hangout with the Dutch team and we are going to present them all. They are gathering in the city of Kamerik in the Netherlands. Hi guys. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, we Hi. have uh, from left to right Peter, Martijn, Sylvie and Sylvia. No. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to talk about the social and cultural prejudices on the welfare system. And we are going to be gathering their perspectives, their own experiences through uh, witnessing what is going on. And we are continuing from where we left off uh, last uh, hangout. And we will begin just with placing this open question for whoever wants to answer and begin. What is this social prejudice about? Where does it come from? How does it exist there in the Netherlands in relation to the welfare system? So, I'd like to tell uh, about it. Okay, uh, sure. In the Netherlands, there is a, a common opinion that uh, one has to work to be able to exist. If one doesn't work, one doesn't have a right to exist. This is also taken from the Bible and it's also added as a name on many farms in the past mainly where it would say ora et labora meaning pray and work. So there is a right to have a welfare uh, grant but uh, really how it feels is, is is a different point because people really need to feel ashamed when they have welfare, when they are in the welfare, because they don't work. So that's a point of shame. It's also called the uh, hand like yeah. begging. It is a. It's regarded as a as form of begging, and also that when is living like a parasite on the efforts of other people. Uh, so, and the, the, <laughs> the amount of money that one gets is so little that that one feels uh, pushed in a very little corner, very limited. And this also has um, the problem that one doesn't feel one has the right to speak up. Because so, of shame and because of the limitation of the money. So it's essentially like a valuing devaluation of the person. If they don't work, like yeah. you are relegated, you're ostracized, you're not worth as much as those who work. Yeah, yes. sure. Yes. We can see that that's how the system works. Uh, essentially, if you have no means to contribute, then why should I give you the money? Uh, does any have has anyone heard there precisely this kind of comments in relation to the people? you know, how people speak in relation to those being on welfare. Yes. For instance, on parties, when people talk about other people, that is a common thing to say. Hmm. That's quite a shame. Uh, what about uh, the relationship that people have, uh, you know, within society? Uh, like, do you come out as a person that has financial trouble uh, how does it work in relation to your personal financial situation? Is it kept quiet? Uh, is there any kind of, um, you know, keeping it secret that you're on welfare? I mean, those who have lived on welfare, how do you live this? Yes, this is now since uh, like a year or a couple of years. There are uh, Facebook groups where people gather and they exchange those experiences and just then expose what's all happening within the welfare system so that's quite a cool thing but it's not like there's solutions but people are just pointing out which government rules like um, are really devastating to people's lives essentially so. What would you say would be, uh, I mean, we are exposed in this situation because if we talk about basic income, it's essentially a similar point to welfare. You are given money when you don't have yeah. a work, when you don't have that support or even a physical disability to be able to work properly. But why do people react this way? We have already gotten Martin's perspective. Anyone else? Um, 
it's it's fear basically it's it's it's, it's from fear it's 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 a judgment and a judgment is fear but it's also from uh, childhood already because it's imprinted as a child in uh, within the family you you just better um have a good ed education and then go and work because that is what is expected from you and if you're not doing that well you you're missing out on the expectation that was on on um projected onto you Yes, like you have to stay away from the welfare system. Yeah. That's the message you get. Yes. Yeah. And, and that is sorry to uh, that is yeah. what I really felt when I uh, had to go on welfare uh, for a short moment, uh, happily enough. For still, I feel it that way because I was ashamed because of the imprint that I had as a child, and uh, that it was not cool at all to uh, to get into welfare so I even had a problem in going to the, the bureau to ask for welfare because I was more prepared to go to uh, uh, to search for a job without welfare but I needed the money to uh, <laughs> to to survive so I had, didn't have any choice if I if I could yeah. I didn't I, I wouldn't have chosen for uh, not going to welfare not asking money yes so we're talking about the fear of getting that kind of sure. supposedly unconditional support and if yeah. we look at the entire uh, system of the basic income it's essentially that like learning how to give unconditionally because exactly. yeah what we require yeah. is of the earth and we are human beings and we can contribute to that unconditional giving uh, what about your situation Sylvia we were talking off air about e your current situation in relation yeah. to because I uh, re-immigrated back to Holland and um, I didn't have any job. I don't have a job at the moment either. And I could have applied for uh, welfare and I didn't do that because I didn't want to get trapped into the system of welfare. So I choose to just stay out of it and just eat a few uh, sandwiches less, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I have a partner, uh, Peter, that is uh, earning a living, so we thought it's cool to just keep it that way. But um, essentially, a lot of people are, um, yeah. Uh, sorry, C can you repeat? Because the the uh, connection dropped a little bit, so can okay. you please say it again so that it gets um, recorded? Let me see what I was Thank saying. You. Like Peter was uh, earning a living. Oh yeah, Peter was uh, my partner. Peter. Um, was uh, earning an, uh, a yes. living for <laughs> the family and uh, so of course we needed more income but we decided to not because we didn't want to get into the, the welfare system and all the regulations and all the um, how do you say that the how do you say the dehumanization yeah. yeah so we didn't and um, that means that a lot of people don't apply for it because they fear the system it's insane in a way because it it's support but you fear it yeah. and you don't want to be spoken bad about and you don't want all the, the regulations and all the, the stuff that comes with it so the actual uh, numbers of um, people that are on welfare or that are unemployed is far um, higher than uh, the numbers that are shown uh, from the government Yes, yes the, sti the, sti the statistics are wrong. Yeah, you they know? are wrong. That's yes, far more. Yes. Yeah. So well, it's like the, even the government wants to keep it a secret. Like you know, there's not so many people on welfare. Yeah. There's no yes. poverty. You know, we yeah. have to keep it like everything is fine, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Quite a situation. And what about uh, the situation in relation to ones that you come out as a person that are on welfare? Have you guys experienced any of this? We were talking that you don't, but maybe from uh, you know other people's perspective, how do they feel? How do they see themselves? Um, well, you don't talk about money in the Netherlands so much. You don't say either. Um, when you make a, a good living, you don't say, "Oh, I'm making that much money," because no, that's not done. You just keep it secret. You just show it. You have nice clothes and things like that, but and a nice house, so everybody knows. Well, that person is just doing good, but you don't speak about it. So you don't speak about being on welfare, although people can see that your kids, for instance, don't have nice clothes or don't have um, all those clubs to go to. So it shows, but you don't speak about it. 
Yes. So it's an entire social status situation, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. this is what I present, this is what I am. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and it's a problem that um, people in welfare are considered uh, to have a problem. There must be a problem because you are, you are in welfare. Like you are not uh, a normal person anymore. Okay, we have a question was, from uh, yeah, the guys okay. at the chat. Yeah. It says, how does the history of the Holland's relationship with colonization and immigration affect how people view welfare? Well, that's mm. the same point of like working for your for your living. You have to like the point of colonization, colonize your your work environment. Like like yeah, that you have to put it for yourself together and not like all people doing it for each other. So that or does this question also ask about the immigrants that are here in, in the Netherlands yes. and taking because that's also a, a, a lot of um, a, a big subject that has been talked about that all oh, the immigrants are taking our jobs so now we are on welfare and hey look they have all the, the good things which isn't of course the case but that's how it's been talked yes. yeah immigration is quite a big aspect in sure. your, yeah. you know, they come here, they get our welfare, but we are the ones paying for it. That's also yeah. a great division. And yeah, like we yeah. own this country, so we have the right to. Yeah. yeah. Because we, I lived with my partner in Italy before, and there we really had no money at a certain point, but there wasn't welfare. So when you look at that point, a lot of countries don't have welfare, and at least the Netherlands has a, a great uh, support system. So that's another aspect to look at. Yeah, immigration onto the places that get welfare. Like here in Mexico, yeah. we have no welfare, yeah. so it is pointless, really. Uh, but you were mentioning also uh, your own experience without having welfare and then kind of seeing that difference. Of course, people will go to the places where they get the money, but what yeah. about, yeah. Um, you know, that stigma toward the immigrants? How are you guys perceiving that currently? Well, um the more we feel the crisis, the more uh, people consider the immigrants yes. as um, a bad thing, not good. Yes. Especially yeah. if we have uh, immigrants that are on welfare because they uh, lost their job and even keep their welfare if they go back to their uh, original country. So what we are looking at is really uh, the problem would be solved if human rights existed and were actually provided for as part of each country's essential, you know, like a basic income model where there would be no need to go out and go to places like the Netherlands or else where they get the basic income or welfare system. Uh, but, you know, it is absolutely ludicrous that we don't have our basic human rights. Like you guys went out of money in, in Italy and mm -hmm. there was no support. Yeah. And that's happening everywhere else in the world, so that's why we are also proposing this living income guarantee, wherein we are reviewing the Netherlands as a place where you get that support. But what about where you don't? I mean, you see it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We have another question. It says, what would happen to the Netherlands to eradicate the stigmatization about receiving free money? I'm going to post that would that would take away all the fear that is there now. Yes. So there will be more people on welfare, I think. That's the situation. Yeah. If you guys see it, the yeah. situation is that many people are are losing their jobs and they're going they're going to have to go on welfare. So sure. the stigma has to be removed somehow. This system does has to change. So what yeah. we're doing with this is kind of letting people know you don't have to be ashamed of getting money because that is how you're able to live. We are of the yeah. earth. We have to have yeah. our human rights guaranteed. So how can you guys see that this can be done in the Netherlands, in your culture specifically? Yes, yeah, explaining that it's, it's the fear that's driving them to, to, to judge, to, to judge a, a welfare system and to, to get well, it, w it would be cool if the government could because we have these ads on TV where they promote uh, yeah. things like um, violence or a child abuse or things like that it could be a cool um, um, subject or topic to also add 
like uh, don't be ashamed to get your welfare, but I don't think it's going to be that. But <laughs> it would be cool. No, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it has to be, uh, to begin by, you know, like the Facebook page that Sylvie was mentioning, that's a way to start, but also like peer-to-peer -peer conversations when, when you hear someone saying, oh, you know, that guy is on welfare, hey, you know, we have to have our human rights uh, guaranteed, so, mm. hey, we all require money yeah. to live. Why not yeah. allowing yeah. others to have that, you know, unconditionally? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. without so. questioning why somebody is on welfare, if he's okay, etc. Just uh, not unconditionally. Yeah, because that's always the question: Is it uh, is he entitled to have the um, the welfare? Because that's not the question we, as a population, have to ask. Because if the regulations are there and the laws are there, and that has um, come to the point that they say, okay, this person um, is entitled to have a welfare um, fee, then we don't have to question that on top of that. And we were discussing yeah. already in the past one, uh, past hangout, how even the amount that you're getting is not sufficient. So we're having a system that is absolutely obsolete, that pushes you to not ask for welfare, that is not enough to live, and then that on top of that, it shows you that, you know, there's not many people on that, so don't even dare to go in that system, as also Sylvia was mentioning, like, I don't want mm. to see myself uh, trapped in the welfare system. So. Mm. We can look at uh, solutions that have to be understood as basic human rights. Yes, <laughs> because this yes. is not a, a basic income. It is, it's really like an almus, a coil. It's really considered like um, a favor yeah, oh. to get the, the money to live by, not as a common right to life. That's the situation. No, That's what not no, no. right? So it definitely needs a, a different name, like a basic income. Or, a or living, living income. income, right? Yeah, sure. That's why we have changed the name, uh, or essentially adjusted the name of basic income toward the model that we're proposing as living income, to not see yeah. it as basic, minimal, yeah. the least, yeah. but see it as what will allow you and enable yeah. you to live the best way possible, you know? Yes. We all know how yeah. much we yeah. have spent money on and how can we live well. Um, in yes. relation to, for example, what you're seeing in, in your own personal situation, would you like to share anything of how you would see changes if you would go into, let's say, a supposed best living condition welfare system? Hmm. I never thought about it. <laughs> there you go. That's, what, that's why it's an interesting question, because exactly. we don't really see that that's possible. Mm -hmm. Already quite a point to look at as well. Yeah, probably. Uh, we have another. Oh, oh sure, go ahead. People will feel a lot more yeah? free. People will okay. feel a lot more Maybe free. Maybe better quality health. foods or something like that. But, yeah. And another point, because I was once on welfare, and mm. I like to, I, I wanted to start my own business and uh, doing an, um, uh, some kind of education for it, but I wasn't allowed to do that. Because it wasn't in, um, it wasn't like what I was doing before. Because I was a social worker and I wanted to become um, an inter interior uh, designer. So they said, no, 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 you have to stay a social worker. But there wasn't any job available, so there was no point in just keeping that uh, job. It was uh, I could uh, be more successful to just change it. So that's another thing that. Um, if we look at a, a more um, um, positive uh, way of uh, a welfare system, I think all the limitations that are there now, that could be um, looked at and, and looked at, at uh, how do we not uh, dehumanize oh, the, you know. <laughs> uh, the people? Because I also read uh, stories about people that have these coaches that uh, are supposed to support them and assist them in finding a job, but they just they talk like, well, shit, I was going to say, yeah. but I'm saying it now. Yeah. <laughs> say it. <laughs> just, <laughs> they just make the people so uh, vulnerable and so um, without any um, self-worth that, well, you don't get those people back into the system if you just make them so sick. Yes, and when uh, people have enough money to live by, then we can buy another education for ourselves. To do some jobs okay. that is needed to be done. Okay, 
Um, we have two questions. First one, it says, so it seems that the animosity toward welfare exists because people feel frustrated about having to pay taxes. What do you have to say mm. about that? Yes, that's the point, yes. That to have to pay, supposedly you have to pay the taxes for, for the welfare people. Yeah. Only it's just so minimum um, in the comparison to what um, the governments are wasting. So that's kind of a, a nil point, I would say. And in basic income, so the personal tax will disappear. So that will be a, a lot less animosity between the people. It would mm. mean a, a huge step forward. As a as a society, so and even to the immigrants, as we were also discussing. Sure, yes, because they are coming for our tax money. That's they will probably. just stay in their countries. Really, who would oh, really want to well. leave their families behind yeah. just for money? Yeah. Sure, indeed, yeah. just for a living. Yes. Uh, okay, the second one it says, uh, it seems to me that as long as basic human dignity and support has come in the form of the welfare payment that costs money from the government and the government has to borrow or create money through debt, there can be no unconditional welfare because it will always cost something. So looking at this from a financial system perspective, what are the obstacles in the Netherlands in terms of reforming the money system so that the welfare does not cost debt or taxes and thus is not a burden to anyone. We have to implement the living income guarantee too. Sure. There's no other way. There's no other way, Joe. Uh, no. So that's why we're here. We're here to promote precisely that sure, reform yeah. that it's not like giving money from the taxes that has to be eradicated because as the previous question that is what's creating the animosity, the separation, the prejudices, the stigma. So it has to be created through renewable uh, processes and sustainable processes such as nationalizing the resources and so forth, which you yeah. can all read at basicincome.me. Uh, but we have another question. Uh, so mm -hmm. it says, how does the media in the Netherlands currently portray and thus impact that stigma associated with drawing welfare benefits? I'd say they are adding to the problem and uh, they are especially like focusing on the people that have to be punished when they cannot find a job. They mm -hmm. have to have that percentage of their welfare and then that is like um, brought into the news and that feels like oh, the, the penalty system within people, like, oh, that's good, yes, that's, uh, that's yeah. nice, so that's where the, the media like supports the yeah, demonization yes, and, uh, of the Yes, and a, yes. And a lot of new rules and regulations are uh, on the people who are in welfare. Yes, that's a problem. And in the newspapers, they, they also they tell uh, all the time about someone who has uh, not followed the rules correctly and had to be punished by taking away his money or her money. So we, uh, people are really criminalized, like uh, who is on welfare is a potential criminal. Sure, yes, this yeah. propaganda it works fine, just fine, yes, uh, elite yeah. propaganda to, to push yeah. down the mass, yeah. So In terms of advertisements great. or something like that, is there anything related to it or is it just news? News. In relation to media. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. And I would like to say this because, you know, at the eyes of the world, the Netherlands is a rich country, a stable country. Everyone is apparently happy and rich, or at least, you know, the <laughs> common perspective. So yeah. that it has been very interesting for me as a Mexican third world country uh, realizing this. Like, yes, they are also going through all of these problems and everything is just kept nice and quiet because people keep quiet and keep yeah. their finances to themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we're doing this as well. It's yeah. like the media of the people. Yeah, yeah it's a cool yeah. opportunity. And there's also, oh, sorry, Martin. There's also another thing that as long as you have a job, as long as there's money in your wallet, you just feel like, oh, I'm top of the world. Yeah. Just the crisis and all the, um, maybe the, the, the going on a welfare, um, isn't going to happen to me. 
but it is there, of course. There is crisis, and it's of course. if you look around, everybody has someone in there, or family, or a surrounding that is on welfare. Yeah. So we yeah. have to make it known and allow yeah. people to to realize that there are solutions that can be politically driven. That you know, just keeping it quiet just keeps this status quo on the facade. You know, it's only a phase that is portrayed as a country that it is, but the crisis is worldwide. So the more that yeah. we speak, the more that we promote this solution, the living income guarantee, the more people will realize, yes, this is a human right. We require money to live. We, we require to live well, and as such, mm -hmm. you know, give that to everyone else. Give as you would like to receive, in essence. Um, yeah, yeah. Guys, we are going to give a closure to this. Would you like to add something? Oh, we're ready for a living basic uh, of living income uh, yes. guarantees. It should be normality. Yes, because <laughs> it should be normal. Exactly. It was, yes. It should be part of who we are, how we support ourselves, how we live, how yeah. our economy runs. That's why the model, the system itself, has to change in order to make that basic income or living income something sustainable. Uh, so. We have one last comment, it's very funny from Rebecca, it says, are not bank bailouts a form of welfare? Does why call the same thing by a different name? Yeah, sure, yeah. exactly, it's a, it's a word game, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, guys, uh, so thanks a lot um, for your uh, testimonies and witnessing this social stigma, and we have already given the solution, living income guaranteed. Yeah. Uh, have a nice day and thank you guys thank for you participating. Yay. Thank, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.